You don't really know much about Halloween. Welcome back to another unboxing video. Uh, this time I am unboxing the subscriber pack from TerraVision, which if you're not familiar with TerraVision and you are a shot on video uh, fan, then your dreams are about to be realized. And if you like uh, oddities and, and whatnot, same deal. Uh, so in this little pack, we got a fun little dumb dumb looking sucker. Uh, we got a fortune-telling fish, which if you are a child of our age, you are probably familiar with that. Uh, we have the uh, thank you for ordering from us. Tells us who this was packed by, who I've spoken with, uh, Elena, and very pleasant person to speak with. Uh, they got a sticker, which I really dig that sticker. Uh, the Creep Coins program, which if you are a frequent flyer at TerraVision, then you might be interested in that, as well as this fine sticker as well. Uh, they're fairly new, so there's uh, I've got, at, at this point, once I get the, the last two movies that I don't have yet that are uh, pre-ordered, I'll have just about almost all of their titles at this point, but uh, everything they've got is fantastic. So a lot of these films are blind buys, and they were purchased based on a wonderful book called Analog Nightmares, the shot on video horror films of 1982 to 1995, uh, written by Richard Mogg. If you are not familiar with that book and you're interested in shot on video films, either you've never watched them or you already love them, get the book. It's fantastic. It's a big, thick read. It'll keep you busy for many, many hours. Um, and so Joel Bob says, check it out, 100%. All right, so uh, the first film we have here is uh, Lost in the 80s, the Joe Zazzo Collection. Uh, Joe Zazzo is primarily known as an actor, but uh, in 84, 85, 86, and 90, uh, he made a series of short films. This was between the ages of 13 and 18, and this is a collection of those films, which I love. Uh, again, shot on video, I'm going to say that a lot in this video. And um, when I was a kid, I used to make movies um, with the VHS tape we had, and then my parents also had a, an actual film camera, and I used that sometimes too. So. That one is kind of like going back to being a kid again. Um, next up, we have Cannibal Campout. Uh, this one is from 1988, directed by John McBride. And this one is one that I've read about for years, um, but I've never actually seen it. And uh, if you are not familiar with uh, this movie, it is kind of notorious um, in the shot on video world. Uh, basically, it's four teenagers out on an outing and they're attacked by a trio of mutant cannibals story as old as time. Um, and this one actually got to the point kind of like boarding house or uh, um, uh, sledgehammer where it actually ended up on video store shelves next to regular big Hollywood releases because it was a wild west back in the 90s for video stores. Um, and then we've got uh, this one. I'm, I'm one of the ones I'm most excited about. Wood Chipper Massacre falls right in line with Cannibal Camp Out where it's one that is kind of notorious. I've heard a lot about um, it is uh, also by John McBride, and this one is from 1988, and uh, it's the Blu-ray debut for this film. I've been reading about it for, for many years, as I said, and so this one is one that is uh, going to be kind of at the top of my list as far as things that I want to buy. Uh, the basic plot is, you know, three siblings begin to kill people with a wood chipper uh, while their father is away. You know, again, what you do when you're kids. Then we've got Hollow Gate. Now this one is uh, from 1988 by Ray DeZazzo. This one was 100%, never heard of it, saw it on the site, looked like, you know, it's a Halloween-based horror film, kind of low budget, and um, I couldn't pass it up because we love Halloween and Halloween-based films. We were married on Halloween. So uh, it was another kind of video store staple of the late 80s, early 90s, um, and it just, you know, ended up in my cart 
as it were. So basically at a Halloween party, a young boy is almost killed by his drunken alcoholic father. And then 10 years afterward, comes back, goes on a murder spree again. Things that happen, real life, imitating art. So then we've got uh, America's Deadliest Home Video from 1993. This one is directed by Jack Perez, who also did Some Guy Who Kills People, which if you've never seen that film, it's fun. Give it a check out. Um, pairs nicely with uh, the uh, Leslie Vernon. I forgot the name of the story, the, the movie. <laughs> anyway, it pairs nicely with that film. Um, so this one is, is a little bit different uh, because it stars Danny Bonaducci and uh, Gretchen Bonaducci, where they are on a road trip, they get taken hostage, and then the criminals force them to tape all of their crime spree, including robberies and murder. Um, it's, again, shot on video, and it's one that uh, uh, people have kind of been clamoring for because it was kind of shocking at the time because Danny Bonaducci. If you're my age, you know who that is. Um, next, we have Shrek, not the big green ogre, but uh, the 1990 film where uh, uh, some boys decide that they're going to... Uh, have a mock seance where they attempt to bring back uh, Max Shrek, the famous Nazi. They are successful. Uh, Max Shrek comes back and starts doing awful things to people. Uh, this is from 1990, directed by Don Adam and Harry Picardi, who are two Full Moon veterans. So if you're familiar with Full Moon Entertainment, you may be familiar with their work already. It looks kind of crazy. Anything about it? I haven't seen it. Um, now, oh, before we get to that one, First one that's on my list that is on order that I don't have yet is Dante's Inferno. It's from 1911. Um, it was originally shot in 1908 and then took until 1911 before it was finished. Um, uh, the directors are uh, Francesco Bertolini, Aldolfo Padovan, and Giuseppe De Liguro. De, De I'll put it down here. I can't pronounce it. Um, but it's considered to be the first full-length feature film and the first horror film that was shown on the big screen, which is kind of a double whammy. And I've seen stills from it uh, all my life as far as my film uh, history sort of life. And it is, you know, essentially based on the Divine Comedy. So if you're familiar with Dante's Inferno, it's a rarity that is interesting. And I'm kind of excited to see it. Uh, that is my dog Shaggy, if you can hear him. Next up, we have Captives from 1988, directed by Gary P. Cohen. Um, Gary P. Cohen is the guy that was behind Video Violence 1 and 2, which, uh, if you've not seen them, they're shot on video, uh, notorious films that are fantastic, uh, they're on the shelf, and, um, this one is about, uh, three guys that invade the house of a wealthy family, um, and they have not come with the intention of stealing anything, they just want to show the wife a video. Don't know too much about this, I just know that, uh, um, I enjoyed the video violence films, and so it just seemed like something that I should probably check out. Um, then we've got Santa Claus, the 1996 John A. Russo film, which if you might recognize that name, John A. Russo, who is part of the, uh, the uh, Night of Living Dead camp from 1968, the uh, George A. Romero kids. Uh, he was part of the group that uh, made the film. It's got a lot of Night of Living Dead alumni in there, including Bill Hensman. Um, and then uh, there's just a bunch of other people. Look it up. I won't, I won't bore you. But there's a lot. I'm a fan of Hensman and Russo. And this is one, I think, one of the last ones I don't have. Um, and it's about a B-horror movie actress who is stalked by a fan who's bent on doing bad things. Uh, next up, we've got the 2021 remake of Cube. Um, Vincenzo uh, Natali did the original 1997 film, which is fantastic. Uh, this one is by uh, Yoshiko Shimuzu, and um, it's essentially, not essentially a shot-for-shot -shot thing, but it's more or less the same plot, uh, just redone for a new generation. And in Japan, um, this one, I didn't even know it existed until it came out, and I love all of the Cube films. I think they're fantastic. And they're fascinating. And so this one, if you already know about Cube, you know the story. Uh, right. Linnea Quigley's Horror Workout from 1990, directed by Kenneth J. Hall. Uh, this is both a workout video, a zombie movie, and a starring vehicle for Linnea. So if you're a horror movie fan, you know who Linnea Quigley is. Um, I'm 
really not sure how or why this even got made, but it, it is actually a workout video. Um, it's one that I've never seen, but I've been curious about. And so uh, it's got some extra stuff on here, which I've heard is pretty good. But uh, essentially, uh, Linnea takes a shower and then uh, she does some stretches, goes on a run, and then some zombies start attacking and her and her friends that are working out. Uh, or I don't know what happens after that. We'll have to find out. Um, and the last one that I don't actually have because the box is now empty is um, the Newly Deads, which if you are familiar with this channel and you know my wife and I, that is our moniker. Uh, the Newly Deads is from 1988, directed by Joseph Merhai. It is currently on pre-order, um, and it was done by Neon Lights Entertainment. Um, and they put out a bunch of films from 1986 to 1990, and Terrorvision has gotten a hold of it and is resurrecting it. It was, I believe, on uh, being done by Troma at one point. Um, but basically, the owner of a lakeside resort murders a transvestite, and then 15 years later, a spirit comes back and starts killing honeymoon couples. Sounds like a trauma movie, um, but since it's our moniker, I figure it's something we should definitely check out, and it should be on the shelf. So uh, if you would like to check out TerraVision, I'll put their information up here. Highly recommend it. Great people to work with. Small company should be supported because there's a lot of uh, bigger boutique labels out there that are um, kind of you know, then the limelight and these guys definitely deserve a spot there as well. If you'd like to check out our stuff, go to thenewlydeads.com. You can check out our blog, our podcast, our TV show, our YouTube videos, uh, events where we're going to be selling our art as well as um, eventually maybe a store for us and just basic information about myself and my wife. So that is it for this unboxing. I know that was a lot. Thank you for hanging out and uh, we will see you next time.